The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this Monday. Monday, the what? Monday, the 7th of August. And what we're looking at here is fascinating market. Let's just go through all the numbers as we're looking at them. We did the 10 o'clock update, but really I couldn't talk very much about each position. Um, that is the daily, weekly, monthly, where we stand after we now kind of, we're, we're into um, August, uh, this is the first full week coming up, but more importantly, there are so many signs here that suggest that there's some toppiness unfolding, but unfolding and actu actuating that is really, those are two se separate things. So what we're looking at here is the Dow is up 250 at 35,000 the G 20 considering what Apple did the other day this is really quite good action uh, I should mention we actually short from just about the exact top but that that's not the issue here because that was based on a certain indicator that I use but the indicator of a last resort is this one right here and that is the 914 period moving average look at this the price is the Dow price, the thick gray line. Price went underneath the 14 period moving average. It's done that so many times. And yet, when it did that back in May, the nine period turned pink. When it did it every other time, that nine has just gone straight to the 14 period moving average, held, and then bounced with the price. Are we running out of time and steam because we've just done this so many times? And you've already gone from basically the beginning of June to July, and now we're into August. Uh, isn't, it isn't it time that we had a bit of a breather? That's not the issue. The issue is this particular indicator for me says that until the nine period moving average crosses pink and holds there for at least a couple of sessions, you've got internal strength. So we've got... On, in the bigger picture, the internal high, the left side high over here, we've got a residual right side high, but there's just some kind of internal strength that's still maintaining that nine period moving over the 14. Look at the S&P. Look how close we got to crossing negative. We're actually on the border for two sessions. This is a daily, so I can only talk about it as it stands right here at 10.09 uh, a.m. Eastern Time. Look how close. One little reversal today, starting to see the S&P, which is up 22, uh, 23 right now at 45.01, start to uh, peter out and get to only a plus 9. And then we could start to see some selling, but we haven't seen it. Look at the QQQ. Turned pink, but the day is young. It could still, that S could just disappear. Up a dollar forty four at three seven three. This is the index one hundred trading vehicle. So all I'm saying is if I'm using this particular indicator, these are the this is what I need to see to really start to not just tank, but to start to see lower highs and lower lows. And we haven't seen look at the IWM. <clears throat> Lousy action today, down 74 cents at 139, 193.47, sorry, 47, and that nine period moving average is still holding. Look at the SMHs, semiconductors, so close, up a dollar 24, 155.51. Oh man, look at that! It just, but it hasn't turned negative yet. So I'm just saying to you, those are the criteria that I'm looking at, and uh, even if we do have short positions. Uh, they're based on something else, and now we have to have the fulfillment to see the indicators work because the price is going down. And so far, the Dow is now up almost 300 points. Isn't that interesting? 35,382. At any stage, if we can start to hold in this area, there's a chance you could go to Friday. You can go to Friday's high. It looks so bad at the end of Friday. Look at that. that the closing under the 14 period moving average for the first time since back in the 10th of July. 
So yes, there's internal, just these flushes of, of strength coming in. Uh, I want to go to the to the other areas, and I just want to show you XLK. XLK is the um, this is the S and P Select Tech Spider Fund made a peak G G slash C, but it didn't get to a D right there at 181 point was it 40 or something? Yeah, 181.46, and here we are at 171.58, and for two days now. The nine period moving average has crossed negative. Now let's go to uh, gold. Gold is trading down a little bit, down seven at uh, 1969. Just stuck in this range. The nine period moving average has been negative for about three, four days. Uh, this is what we're looking at in the weekly chart. That's actually three, four weeks. And it's really kind of struggling, but it isn't breaking down. There's a big difference between struggling and the sideways trading consolidation. And actually plunging the silver in a cell mode cell signal to cell mode i forgot to put that in there a down arrow under the, the under the 200 period exponential moving average trading at uh 23.34 down 0.36 and what have we got in the weekly chart sideways action way better looking chart than gold but still weak looking at high grade copper this is a monday so i'm going to do them all high grade copper Pulling back down 0 0.02 at 3.844, uh, made a peak D. Remember peak D in the Chapman wave? You always got to be careful if you start to pull back sharply. Yep, there it is. And what have we got? We've got the uh, daily still green, nine period moving average. The weekly is still pink. It's been that way for a couple of months. And the monthly chart. So I think uh, high grade copper is telling us that there is some kind of slowdown. And we'll go, I like to do this all together. High grade copper is the international measure of economic strength. I don't know if it still is, but it has been for years and years and years. And here's high, um, this is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. Nice bounce up 3.68 at 574.02. Made a peak D just stuck in the sideways range with a high level consolidation. Going to be watching this very closely. And uh, the nine is still over the 14, but everything's starting to weaken. MACD stochastic, um, nine period moving average is seeing um, diminution between the nine and the 14, but that 14 is still rising. So we've got to watch this very closely. We're looking at oh, US bonds. Look at this US bonds, plummets down, goes to a trough F. In the daily chart, weekly chart made that arch that goes from an H to an M pattern. Now, this is going to be, I spent some time on the weekend when I did my uh, market overview for my subscribers, my all long uh, market overview. Uh, that just gives a picture of where we are, what we've been doing, and what our stocks, our positions, and what we're looking at. And I said, there is just a chance. This is different to the others like um, Schwab and the KRE. Uh, that's the uh, regional bank ETF. This is a little different. It has just like a question mark. Uh, was this a Chapman Wave volume price climax reversal on when on Thursday, when the T the TLT plunged to the ninety five thirteen low with forty two million in volume, and the day before, oops, wait a minute. Sorry, that I should have gone straight to that. 94.54 on the Thursday at um, with almost 60 million. Um, that was a very high level of volume, but it really wasn't a record. It wasn't a smash. So I think that it's just a sign to say there could be a bit of a bounce, but that's not the end of yields. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I was just asked if I could get to the uh, uh, micromanagement. Yeah, so this is the uh, one-minute chart of the E-mini. It is beautiful arch formation. And then in a shorter time period, it tested the low that was right there at about uh, 8.39 this morning at 45.10. It went to 45.10 right there at 10.03. <clears throat> and then it started to bounce. Uh, and, and there was, let me just get this out the way, something that because I had already uh, shorted, I just felt I just had a cover because of the steepness that I was looking at of the unbalanced volume reversal. Now we've gone to a leg C, it's actually a peak C, and there's a chance within the next five or 10 minutes we should test the 45.27.75 uh, high of, I'm trying to see the time, it's 9.38. Um, and because we did this really sharp arch pattern right here, and then held beautifully. This is the Eiffel Tower type pattern. I think there's a chance. This is a chance we could go to a leg D above uh, 45.27.75, and then we got to see what happens. But the buying has come in to the beginning of August. We had that last week where fund managers come in. This is about where the uh, all the vicissitudes of uh, the normal end of month, beginning of month, buying and selling have kind of taken place. And now we're going to see for the first two days of, of uh, this week, we're going to see whether or not fund managers are stepping in to some areas that they were not in before <clears throat> and starting to buy. Or maybe areas that were in, they were in before uh, had a question about Boeing. And let's just see that. Yeah, so this 120, uh, sorry, this 10 minute chart could go to a leg D. So the, all 1020 this morning, we've got another, oh, right now, from now, this is going to be the area where you start to see the real fight begin between buyers and sellers. New, the, the real big players come in now. They, they've sort of stepped aside <clears throat> from that opening gambit. Uh, I had a question about RKTs. This rocket. Companies, I don't know if this is the financial concern, um, ABC, this is a D in the weekly. Um, it once hit the 40 area, it plummeted down to the single digits. Now it's trading at 11.37. 
I, I really don't know. I, I, I do know Rocket. Uh, we've got uh, Tommy O'Brien with his uh, newsletter uh, title, Rocket, right there. So we've got a bit of a rocket here because it's moving up 1.52%, up 17 cents at 11.35 after a really good session on Friday. I like this very much. <clears throat> I'd like to just see if I can take a moment as we're looking at these things, because I am going to go to the financials right now. Uh, Rocket Co's does, question mark. Uh, Michigan-based holding company consists of tech-driven real estate, mortgage, and financial services business, including simple and fast digital solutions for complex personal transactions, rocket companies. So maybe this is that company that we've seen so often that we used to see aspiring to the upside and then just lower lows and lower highs for months on end from 2021 after the high of 40 and it's just come down. Now it's actually starting to build a base. I actually like this. I, I don't want to take this time now. It's not Technical Friday, but this is a Chapman Way flat base restart. There's a chance that it could be a, an unconventional flat base restart. I just haven't been able to take the time to study it intently. But this flat base says after uh, a, a G or a, a C or a D, you got to be careful because if it comes back and takes out the low off the peak D, um, even if it goes higher, this is becoming a magnet, and that means the 10.02 area, let's call it 10.50 to $10, that's going to be your major, it's like a magnet. The further away we can push, the further away it goes, the better it is. So, so far, this is really good action after that sudden plunge <clears throat> on uh, Thursday of last week, and then gaps up on Friday, it hasn't even thought of filling the gap. I like this very much. So, yes, rocket companies, oh, there it is. A FinTech holding up, that's exactly what I was saying. Uh, but I'm just saying, I don't know if this is Rocket. I, didn't, I thought it was Rocket Financial. Let me just see if there is a Rocket. Uh, maybe, maybe this is the Rocket companies that we saw before. Um, this is very, uh, this weekly chart, the steadiness, even though the pullbacks, I mean, you go from 11 down to uh, under 8. That's a, it's a 30%. That is a big percentage move. And now it keeps making higher highs. Buyers are coming in. The longer it can trade on the weekly basis above the high of, I said this before, 1038 was the 12th of August uh, of 12th of August of 2022. I'm just saying to myself, 12th of we, 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 we haven't got there yet. Yeah, a year ago, it was trading there. And in the year, it's been down to six. It got cut in half, and now it's back again. Cup formation, second cup formation with a higher low and a higher high. I like it very much. Um, let me just have, the, it's not in the XL, I'm sure it's not in the XLF, but let's have a look at this. XLF, nice day today, up 41 cents at 35.32. I'm looking at the KRE. <clears throat> Remember we had the January volume price, volume reversal, uh, way down in the, uh, what was that price? Uh, it was at, ooh, did I forget to put the price? No, there it is. Uh, right there at 34.52 on the 4th of May. So here we are two months later exactly, and it's gone from the 34s to the 48s. Nice action. That 200 period moving here is just starting to become a magnet of 40, 49.80. If that's the case, then I have to say I'm going to be changing my mind about some kind of a rollover because, look, the nine period moving average is way above. It's not even closing in. It's still accelerating up. The MACD is starting to weaken. The stochastics at 80% weakening. On balance forms weak. And yet the price, based on my work on the uh, nine period exponential moving average, says it's going to take a while. It's going to have to close under 46 to even to start to see the green period moving average moving towards the black 14 period moving average. Yes, very nice. I do like Rocket. Um, let's just see. It's trading at 11.40, up 22 cents. I like it. Why? Because it's kind of a position that says, I know exactly w what would happen um, if I was over leveraged to the upside and it broke uh, close below 9.87, something that 9.80s area, because that says, uh oh, we could fill in all this gap and go towards the 200 period moving average. But every time it's used this as a springboard, a trampoline, um, it says to me, Having a position, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to see you over leveraged here. But adding to your position, even now, adding at 11:40, if you're already in, I think you are. Uh, Coda asked me. Um, I think that you, because you're in it, 
I would add a trading position here, and I'd have a fairly tight stop in 11.40. I wouldn't want it to be part of my package if I've already got this is more a trading vehicle right now, I'm saying. So at 11.40, I'd take the stop, The low today is 10.97. To me, 50 cents is just way too much. I'd have like a 27 cent stop and just let it ride. Why? Because if in this, if now the Dow's of 328. Um, it's going to be a big question or not whether or when we get that nine period moving average rollover. Um, most importantly, what I'm looking at here is if um, over this week, it's, it's this week that I'm doing, as we go from Monday to Friday, if, yes, if Rocket has even touched 10.77, I think it's going to try for the higher levels. And then all of a sudden, it has been for a long time since. Wow. Since April of 2022 comes. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, we're back, and the Dow's at 321, SB's at 28. We're looking at the book that, uh, that 10 minute card finally got to that leg D. What a ride, huh? Up and down, up and down, but it's at that D. That's the objective of, of a buy mode. The stochastic, though, dipped sharply lower after 80%, but it's gone right back to 89%. That's really strong. On balance volumes, a little overbought. So I'm looking at this peak E in the one minute chart. We're going to see what happens here because the buying key, I want to, 
in this first Monday, the first day of the week, the first couple of hours, I want to see the influences. I want to see where money seems to be flowing. And right now, money seems to be flowing in certain areas. Maybe the financials are going to see some benefit. Okay. So within that said, I'm going to just go FXI was a question. FXI is the, um, this is the large cap iShares China ETF pulling back here, 19 cents to 28.94 after that peak D. I have to really wait for it to close underneath the 14 period moving average before I can put a down arrow in the daily and the weekly chart had a good bounce and it hit a fib number and now it's kind of pulling back. <clears throat> so I'm watching this one. Another question came in about Amazon. Amazon, here we go. Amazon. Uh, I didn't finish the bonds, right? Yeah, I did. Amazon gapped up. Today it went underneath the gap low of Friday. But it's come back again. It's up 60 cents at 140.18. I like this action very much because it's got this left side, right side price time match 145.57 way back in uh, 2022. I think it was about uh, September. And now it's gone from 145 down to 80 and then back again to 140. Leg B in the weekly chart. And that's just telling me that Amazon... Um, can I just, I, I did it myself. I had just, I, I get these little things like a, uh, a bag of tea or a, what did I get the other day? Oh, ink. Um, in fact, I found instead of always getting my Eastman coat, a Hewlett Packard, um, very expensive ink. I don't even use much of the, the printer all that much anymore. I, I found something online. So for 30 bucks, Instead of $32 each, I got the black and then I got the colored for 30 bucks, a dual pair. And it wasn't a Hewlett Packard, and it works just great. You know, Amazon is what a change. You know, you, 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 you leapfrog. It's not even leapfrogging. It's coming up with new, like Uber. These, these extraordinary innovations change the way people act, the way people move. And that is the metamorphosis. That's the thing that is so pertinent to the to the big major bull market that we are in even if we're getting a little choppy etc i mean when you think about it it's quite a phenomenon okay let's just get back to our story here apple mm -mm, gave a little warning that the peak d could very well make an arch formation can you imagine apple's down 3.29 today at 178 and the dow is up 318 uh, what have we got? We've got Goldman Sachs, probably. That's the one because that whole brokerage area seems to have held quite nicely. Oops, where is it now? Goldman Sachs. Hello, everybody. There we go. There it is. Okay, Goldman Sachs makes a peak C, goes sideways. It should have one big spike to a D. It's up $3. It's not actually a fantastic pattern, but it is an improving pattern. Let me just draw this. Chapman Way falling axe formation. Whoops, straight line. There's your trend line. Oops, got a little downtrend line. And there it is, falling axe formation. You go one to one to the upside, but you've got to be breaking out. You've got to get above, so I'd say, 363 to really keep going out to the upside. Uh, what else is moving? We've got um, Amgen. Amgen? Good old Amgen. Oh, how nice. Amgen by a farmer. Um, Peak C, this is a leg. No, this is not. That's a C is right there on the 200 period moving average of 238.48. And that was 238.48. Double top there at C, C1, C2. And then bam, it goes right to D. And we're in leg D right now. Weekly charts, improving monthly chart. Yeah, not too good. So look at that 200 period moving average, average how it stalled. And then it used it as a takeoff pattern. So you've got just a number of stocks couple of stocks, uh, JP Morgan. Oh, there's financials, huh? JP Morgan acting okay. It made a peak G, actually. Alternate count G slash C. I'll put that in. F right there. G slash C right there. And that usually says, um, these days it's been doing it more and more to say, yep, you could just tag a D slightly higher than the previous high, and then you could have some kind of a congestion or oh, wait a minute. I also got to put this in here because that's the pattern that my eye sees. Chapman wave, stalk leg formation. Is this a turnaround or is it a breakout? We'll be watching this closely, JP Morgan. Um, so I did that, did that, did that, did that. Uh, question Oh, uh, <clears throat> NVIDIA. So the statement, not a question, but the statement was 
do you realize that uh, NVIDIA is uh, uh, like 230 PE? Um, it just, it's just from like the dot com. Well, it's because it's in the lead in terms from everything I understand. NVIDIA has the chips that are, are the, in most demand. And it's pulling back, having a good day today, so far up 7 at 454. But it's making lower lows and lower highs just in the short term. I think NVIDIA is kind of stalling. Um, but I'm just looking at the chart. I mean, you know, go from NVIDIA, which is right on the cusp, has been for ages on the cusp of everything that you need in the chip area, to Intel, which is having a very nice turnaround. And you can see, you can see that in the chart. Nice turnaround, but maybe not good enough just yet, but it's improving. So Intel maybe is the one that has a bigger percentage on the upside, but eventually it starts to break out. Then NVIDIA, just in terms of price, and percentages, but I, I have to tell you, this is this is impressive. Okay, next question that came in here was, market market did that did that did that. Uh, natural gas NG. So the question came in: Where would you add to the natural gas? So this is one of the. This is a very strong session. Unfortunately, with natural gas, it has a very good session. It looks fantastic. Like it's breaking out, and then it stalls and makes a lower low. This particular pattern right now is saying that if natural gas at 2.76 in the continuous contract up 13 ticks is able to close for two out of three sessions, it's done it close, closely before, but it hasn't really done it in, in a decent way. But if it's able to close decisively above the continuous contract 2.783 high of the 25th, another uh, 20th of July, um, that means it could now head towards the 290s. And that's really what you want to see because that weekly chart just looks horrible. I don't even want to discuss the monthly chart. Uh, so it has to come from the daily. So if you are long, where would you add? If you're going to, if I wouldn't be playing this game. So this is not my trade at all, but did you, it is your question. I would say, say uh, are you looking at UNG or you got the natural gas contract? UNG is a little different, slightly different, I would say. I would add right here, and I'd have a very tight stop, and I'd treat this as something almost separate, as if it's a trading position at 7.29, up 34 cents, or in the natural gas, whatever the equivalent is in the position in the this contract, right at and I would have the tightest stop, because if it works, that's great. But if it fails, it's going to fail very quickly, and you got to be you got to be ready for that. I'll be back. Gaza 337. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So a question came in. Uh, hi, Basil. If you believe uh, that a short-term bounce this is a short-term bounce at least another leg down. Do you have one or two areas uh, you feel are more prone to falling? You know, in, in this person's case, you've done so well by not doing any shorting for quite a while. Um, I'm, I do have areas, and I think the clue is going to be the SMHs, the semiconductors. Um, let me just show you why. In the semiconductor area, you've had this double top and the right side. So 160, I better put the date in because I'm going to refer to this uh, until it gets taken out. This is on the 18th. So uh, July 18, let me just put that in, 7, 18. It's going to start looking a little messy. And this is the one from the test, and that's 161.17, and that was on the 31st. Yep, the 31st. So let me just put that in here. So the semiconductors, I'm just going to give you a kind of a, a synopsis of what I'm looking at and why I'm looking at it this way. The semiconductors have led, and that's my rule of thumb for, I don't know, forever, has been that where the semiconductors go, at some point the general market tends to go. I just need to do something there real quickly. I don't know if it's even worth doing it. Did that make a higher high? This is an F. And that's a D. Yeah, so um, what's the time? 10.43. I just, I'm looking at patterns. I want to show you something. Look, the the E-mini one-minute chart was so close. Just do this here. Was so close to, um, there. It was so close to turning down negative. And then it made this M-shaped pattern right here to extend the nine period moving average over the 14. And even now, with the MACD weak and the stochastic way under 80%, um, and the relative strength weak, look what's happened. Only now is there a chance that you're going to get this turn down. And this turn down at 45.24 on the E mini has to take out 45.15 really quickly. It has to do it by about 11.05. And then a little later on, it has to take out 5.45.10. But look, even now with the sharp pullback, it hasn't gone pink. And that's the power of this nine period moving average. Look what happened here. It took from that high right there at peak G-C at 938. It took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars to cross negative. Right now, you've got even this is intra, intra bar. We've still got to wait for the bar to complete. You've got the S with the nine period moving average is turned down. So, what I'm seeing is that the semiconductors that to me is the clue area. And I, I, you know, just for clarification and, and just for uh, openness, we did short, we have a short, uh, like a little bit of aggressive short position on the semiconductors. But look at this. 
that nine period moving average still it's up a dollar thirty thirty five at one fifty five point sixty, but it's tough because until you get that pink sustained, you can't get the down move. You can get it briefly. You can even wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle, but you got to get it to move down. So I'm just saying to you, I'm not sure it's really worth your while. Rather look for things to buy on the way down because you've done well uh, avoiding. I, I believe I might be wrong, but I, I believe you've been avoiding the short side. And I'm just saying to you, you know, a couple of losses on the short side, you could have just waited and just got your, your long positions in the next what a week or two weeks or three, whatever it takes for some kind of a digestive phase, if it's going to happen. That's all I'm saying. So now let me go back to the semiconductors. Where would and what would I be looking for? In this particular instance, I'd be looking for, uh, we've already taken out the low of, right there, the low of the 20th, is it? Yeah, the 20th of July at 152.29. We took it out three days ago, and look at this nice move up. But at the same time, let's go back to NVIDIA. This is a big a comp a component of, of the, the whole indices. This is kind of this is the, the biggie. And it's struggling. It hasn't turned pink. It's holding. It's not doing great, but it's not doing badly. It's a, not a bad consolidation after such a spectacular. It's almost straight up in the weekly chart from uh, – from the January lows in the 150 area. So it's a little bit, as I said on, on Friday, it's a bit of a chutzpah, it's a bit of a cheek to even think. It's a hubris to think you can step in front of this train and stop it. I'm not doing that. What I'm saying is on all the technical indicators that I'm looking at, the one, the the indicator of last resort, the, the nine-period moving average over the 14, hasn't crossed down yet, but it's starting to show signs of deterioration. So that's what I'm saying. If you look at AMD, AMD had a spectacular earnings report, and then it plummeted. Now it's coming back a little bit. So each one of these is doing something different. Micron, uh, same thing, had a very nice move. Peak A, B, C, D. This is a peak E right here having a bit of a flag pattern, consolidation, filled in the gap. So they're all doing different things. So until I see the semiconductors really start to pull back, uh, let me do applied materials. I mean, we could go on and on. Um, holding a very nice move today, a peak D in the weekly chart, but all the technicals here are actually quite good. Stochastic starting to weaken at 72%. MACD is weakening a little bit, but still positive. So I'm waiting for this to unfold. And I, I think that in your case, you want to know targets. My target would be if. There's always an if because we aren't the, the chart. The chart is the chart. If the semiconductor in the next, oh, we can't go more than Thursday or Friday. By Thursday or Friday, it's actually trading below 151. That'll be the clue to me that finally we've got something of a pullback that is going to be market-oriented, not just specifically the semiconductors. And it usually don't get it in this kind of rotational way. Usually the semiconductors, um, they, they kind of lead the market and they have sometimes followed the market. But in this particular instance, the high that was made, the double top at 160 to 161, that's working, but we haven't got the, the double bottoms also working. So you have to take out one of them. In this case, I'm saying the double bottom has to be, and then you've got a market pullback. So let's look at it again together in the next couple of days. It's different to what I'm talking about in terms of portfolio action and why I'm doing specific things. Okay. Now, with that said, before we uh, get the break coming up, before the final section, um, I wanted to just tell you, <clears throat> where, where did it go? Where did it go? Yeah, so you've got stocks like an Uber. Uber's had a spectacular move. Uh, it's gone from, you know, the weekly chart you can see, there's a G-C, usually a G-C, <clears throat> if all the technicals are strong, makes a cup formation, it can even go to a D. But this pullback here at this alternate count E slash C in the weekly chart, in the daily chart, says that I should put a down arrow because it's already closed under the 14 period moving average four times if today's also going to be a close under it. It's taking a bit of a breather and I haven't finished putting this in. I started doing that. I haven't finished because I didn't want to add to the bar. It says that sometime in August, it's a big deal. It's at 44.96. It's not a big deal to say, but sometime in August, it should 
I get to uh, put it to the principle. I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, what's the, uh, the question came in, what's the pattern du jour? What's the pattern that you'd be looking for in the E-mini and whatever it is that you're looking at? So, I just wanted to clarify. So, a question came in, what sectors would you be looking at? The semiconductor has been the best. It made a record. This is not, this is all-time highs. So, I, maybe I'm finessing it. So, that's something separate. But I'm just saying to you, I, I'd be a little careful. I wouldn't be too... Uh, too glib about suddenly saying I, I got a short if you have been long and you've been doing very well I'm just saying I maybe stick with that for a little while longer and just have patience you'll get a new buy signal but there are specific areas that I think are, are becoming a little bit vulnerable um, meantime this is the pattern the lowercase h looks like there it is you come down sharply then you make an h pattern you fail, you fail at a peak a or b and you take out the left side low tesla's just done that we i don't know if we've just done that in the e-mini uh, i think we have um uh, yep there it is peak a peak b and now you've just turned down this is a very large arch formation peak d and the always looking for d's there's your peak d and the um 10 minute chart of the E mini, around about 3 30 this morning. Now the peak D right here. It hasn't gone to a sell signal or sell mode yet in the uh, 
10 minute chart certainly sell mode in the uh, 10 minute chart have we got a two click session form for me it wouldn't be two if we're done to i'm on the third click right here but is that a possibility that you could have the top made right now at about the 45 30 area in the e-mini yeah, it's a possibility. Buying keeps coming in, but I just make it real simple. If the SMHs, <clears throat> which is trading at 155.51 at this point, come down with, they have to go together, comes down with the market, and later in the day, the Dow, instead of being up 311, is actually only up 160, but the S&P has actually gone to only a plus 8. That says maybe we close weak. So that's what I'm looking at here, but it's a process of that that at 914 uh, tool that we have look it's taking a long time to overlap stay tuned for steve rose see you tomorrow <laughs>